Okay, with the addition of the collar, I feel like it all kind of comes together. It's even simplified in terms of its color options, right? Like the gray of the mouth is the same as the gray of the nose. So this is a pretty simple, straightforward vector emoji. And I think it would work well. One way to test it is to zoom in and out on it. Because like a logo, emojis need to be readable at very small. So that's why you don't want just a ton of detail that's essential to viewing it because it's going to get lost. It also needs to work well on different backgrounds. So one way to test that is I can duplicate this background fill and I can say edit fill now with black. And that scales pretty well, though the color gets lost. And then I can duplicate command J and I can say edit fill with white. There we go. Ah, keeps on. I need to get off the uh, shape tool. It keeps on making new shapes for me. Okay. So I'm going to say edit fill with white. Now, even that one, even though it's such a light emoji, that gray is enough to make it work. So I'm going to say that this is a finished one. So I'm going to turn off all the backgrounds. So I just have that empty grid. I'm going to turn off my templates. Any raster files I'm going to turn off. So I only have vector shape files left. Right? To make sure of that, I can hold down Shift, select all of them, and put them into a group. That when I turn off the group, that's only filled with, you can think of them as smart objects or smart layers. These are all the vector shapes. They have that little icon in the thumbnail. That is just like having a vector file in Illustrator with all of its individual paths that can be modified. Now I save. I save it as my PSD. But then in order to put it onto Canvas, I'm going to have the background turned off and I'm going to save it as a copy, and I'm going to save that copy as a PNG, again, so it supports transparency. So it's free floating. I'll save that to the desktop with the same name. Function F11 will show me my desktop. Here it is. I can open it up in preview and see that's what it looks like. Very good. And now that is an online file format that can go to Canvas. So I go to exercise two. You can get to this under assignments. And I always start with my name as I want to be called and then last name as registered. And it's really helpful to do that because that will always be 12 point default. And that helps you know how big to make your image, right? I say about four times the size of my name <laughs> is a decent size. I use the upload tool, upload my image. I drag my PNG in there, not my PSD because that will not work. And it comes in way too big because it's print resolution. And then I make it about four times the size of my name. And then post. So that meets the basic requirements. Except that I can do more. And these are finishing extras. And they're actually pretty easy to do. It's like adding things like texture or drop shadows. And the reason they're easy to do is because once you have all of your different vector shapes, all we have to do is right click on them. Let me start with going on a black background and I want to make this collar show up. So all I have to do is click on that collar with auto select layer turned on for the move tool. The collar is made with this ellipse. And then if I double click on the layer, not on the name of the layer, but on the this empty space to the right of the name, it will open up my layer styles. And on layer styles, I can play with all of these options, but in order to get that dark color to show up on that black background, I'm going to do what's called inner glow. And then I can click on that and see my options. Look at the different defaults. I'm going to turn the noise down and take the size down a little bit. So it's a little bit more subtle. So this is a glowing effect around the edges 
of that shape. And that helps it to show up on black. What's so great about this is it keeps it as a vector shape. And it also makes that effect something I can turn on and off. Because it's a property added. So if I think, oh, that's nice, but it's a little too strong, I can always go in and just take the opacity down on that effect a little bit. Or I can extend it. Make its size a little bit bigger, but its opacity a little bit less. So it's almost like a gradient. Subtlety is helpful here. Where else might that be helpful? What about around the jaw? So it's a little bit of shadow underneath the jaw. Cartoons don't have it, but they have line art that, that separates it. So especially on a white background, something that gives a little bit of shadow around the jaw might be helpful. So I find that vector shape. I double click, I'm gonna add a similar effect. But instead of making it lighter at the edges, I'm going to do an inner shadow, which will make it darker at the edges. Or actually, let's do an, an inner glow, because a shadow will be directional, and I don't want it to be directional. But instead of it being on screen, I'm going to make it normal. Or we can use the setting we've used before, multiply, which will only darken. And then I'm going to choose not white, but like a shadowy gray. And then I can play with its opacity, with its size, so that will do the exact same thing on all sides. That's inner glow. Inner shadow, to show you the difference, is directional based on angle. So if I set the angle directly from above, a 90 degree angle, and you can also type values in. Um, I'm gonna actually reverse it, there we go. So it's a negative 90 degree angle. And then it won't show at the top, it will only show at the bottom. So shadows are directional, glows are universal always equal on each side i can play with the size but if i make it too big then it's going to show up at the top where i don't want it to so that looks about right and then i can play with how dark so you can really even if it says glow you can turn it into a shadow just by changing its blending mode now what if i really like that and I want to apply it to the top of the head as well. But I don't want to have to go through all of that. I can right click on the effect and say copy the layer style. These are called layer styles. Then I can go to this other layer, right click and say paste layer style. And it will put the same effect on it. But it might not look the same because what it did is it gave me that shadow here. But I might want it up here. And so nothing is permanent. I can always open it up and just go to the inner shadow and then change that angle. But notice when I did that, it shifted it for this one as well. So this is what's called global light, <laughs> which is the default. So I'm gonna undo that. And then when I go into it, I wanna change the direction because it's thinking of it as everything's lit by the same light source. If I uncheck global light, then I can swap it and have them lit by two different sources. Which for emoji, an emoji makes a lot of sense. And that helps the, the ears be a little more distinct. Maybe I want to use that same effect. So right click, copy the layer style, and maybe I want to apply it to the inside of each ear. Paste layer style. There we go. Other one. Paste layer style. There we go. Let's see, the same thing on the collar, that inner glow. Maybe I want to steal that. Paste layer style. I somehow cleared it. I want to not clear it, copy it. Sorry, I don't want to paste something new onto it. Then I want to apply that to the bandit mask. 
See what that looks like. Paste it. And that's way too strong there, but I can go to its settings and I can dial back its size. So it's softened a little bit. Remember, you can always turn them on and off. That just gives a little bit of glow. And then the nose, I want it to darken. So I can do inner shadow. But if I want it all the way around the nose, I can do inner glow, but change that glow to multiply. And then use a darker color. But I kind of like the highlight at the tip of the nose there. I might even decide I'm doing these kind of special effects, right? If I really want that nose to show up, I might decide to duplicate it. But I have to be out of the effects to do that. To duplicate it, move that duplicate up a little bit. Move it behind the one in front of it. And then use an effect called color overlay on normal, on a darker color. with these other effects turned off to give me a bit of a shadow at the top that's a little crisper. Like that. And then I might decide, you know, I like this nose. What it really needs is a little oval highlight on top of it. So these are all just further ways you can enhance it. And I'm going to fill that with white. And I'm going to make sure its stroke is turned off. Seems like whenever you use a new shape that you weren't using last, it will turn on the default with the stroke. So you have to watch that. Maybe I'll shrink it a little bit. Move it up. Okay, now... I want that to look like not such a shiny highlight, but a softer highlight. This is where I can use not inner glow, like I've used before, but outer glow. Take its size way down. It's remembering the last settings I used for these things, which can sometimes be really strong. And I can give it some noise, which I always like. It's like my Boston, Boston background coming through when I say that. Little noise. You can decide how much you want to spread it, how soft it is. And I can even take the opacity of that whole vector shape down a little bit. So it's just a subtle highlight in the nose. And then if I want to transform it, make it a little bit broader. I can Okay, I want the mouth to be a little bit darker. So what will I do? Let's do inner shadow. I can extend its size, make its opacity a little bit stronger. So now it looks like that mouth has a, an opening to it. I might do that to the bandit mask as well. I have inner glow right now, but that doesn't mean I can't also add an inner shadow. That makes it a little bit darker on the bottom than on the top. It's just endless. You can do all these things. Now the eyes. Do I want to do anything more with the eye? Do I want to put like anime highlights in there? Or do I want to put highlights in the, the drool? Well, I can just duplicate this highlight I made for the nose and then transform it. Wait, let's move it up above using command right bracket and then command T holding down shift and rotating will give you exact angles so I want 90 degrees and then I can hold down shift extend it longer 